<laughs> this episode contains mention of self-harm, suicide, postpartum depression, postpartum psychosis, and other mental health crises. So if you or somebody that you know is suffering from any of these things or more, please dial 988, the Suicide Prevention Hotline, and I will just jump right into the episode. Hey guys, welcome back to my podcast, If We're Being Real. I know I haven't been on here in a second, which is wild, but I had to come back for one of the most important days to me, which is World Mental Health Day, which is October 10th. I thought that this would be a very great time to come back to my podcast and just basically tell my story again for the 15th time. But why I tell my story is not necessarily because it was a traumatic time for me but it's to bring awareness to the fact that you can be happy on the outside and you can look happy on the outside and look okay on the outside but on the inside there could be something fundamentally wrong so before i jump in i do want to say that i have resources in the description box and everywhere to let you know if you're going through a hard time and you need support please reach out if it's not to a family member to the 1-800 number for suicide prevention please reach out you are not alone and i just want to let you know that no matter what there's somebody out there that loves you so let's jump in so i've always been interested in mental health even from a young age um when i was in high school i got bullied pretty terribly by a couple of boys that i'm pretty sure liked me um not to toot my own horn but now that i look back i was so cute <laughs> but anyway um i got bullied pretty heavily in high school and it actually caused me to transfer schools and that really was a time that I started realizing that I had bouts of like not wanting to go to school I had bouts of depression at that time I didn't know it was depression because I did go to school in Nigeria and mental health is a little bit different over there than it is over here so um, that was the first time that I really had felt not like myself and I just didn't think anything of it what really thrust me into the mental health field aside from my degree in psychology was me about to get married and i was i can't remember what age because i i honestly at this point everything just runs in together but i remember i was about to get married and i really started realizing how much i was struggling on my day-to-day -day life like i was struggling to be organized i was struggling to keep a balance between work and life and that was the first time that i started realizing that i might have a problem and not necessarily like a problem that i couldn't solve but like a problem that i needed help with so i started kind of thinking about therapy around that time i think that was like maybe 2017 i started thinking about therapy but again something about therapy is if you don't think you need it you're not gonna go out and be like okay let me have a therapist you're just gonna be like all right well you know it's not important right now and at that time i just thought you know what it's not important right now i was already doing marriage counseling so i was like okay well that's all i need for now now after giving birth i had my first child amari he's five now he has autism himself so i used to work with kids with autism which is super cool and i feel like that's really what helps me with him however when i first gave birth to him it was a very stressful time i think it was honestly pregnancy that made me realize how much mental health meant in general because i had bouts of loneliness i was always super sad no matter who was around me and i just really did not know that i was struggling mentally because i at the time, even though I used to talk about mental health all the time, it felt as though I was talking about something that couldn't be helped because I didn't know at the time that I could actually go beyond what I knew to help myself and what I had researched. So after Amari, after I gave birth to Amari, I took a whole month off of social media and posting and everything because at that time I was a full-time creator. But 
I still dabbled here and there with like, you know, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I actually started out talking about mental health Mondays and I, I started this whole series called mental health Mondays. And I ended up being like, okay, this is like a great way to just like express myself, help anybody. And it just kind of was great from there. Now, after Amari, when he was around six months, I found out I was pregnant again. And I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I was very extremely stressed because I a did not even know it was possible to get pregnant so soon after. And B, I wasn't ready to have another child because I still had trauma from raising Amari, not being able to breastfeed. I had gestational diabetes. It was just too many things all back to back that I knew that having another child was going to be so much stress for me. But after finding out it was a girl, I honestly just was very excited to have a girl. You know, I had a boy and honestly, I just went into that whole mindset of like, well, it doesn't matter. I have a boy and a girl. Life is great, be especially because honestly, I was the type of person who didn't think I was going to have kids in the first place because I generally was not having periods. And I also had a miscarriage before Amari. So it wasn't something that I knew, but even during Amari's pregnancy, I was extremely cautious. Everything would make me have anxiety and I'll be like, oh my goodness, like what if this happens or what if that happens? I was just very extremely anxious. Now, after um, Ivana's pregnancy and after I gave birth, I gave birth in 2020 and we all know what happened in 2020. Everybody's life kind of flipped upside down, no matter who you are, no matter where you are. We all share that same story of 2020. Now, at that time, I would never forget the pandemic actually started right before my birthday. And for me, birthdays are such a huge thing for me. And I was actually turning 29, but I felt like I really wanted to celebrate. I wanted to go out and get my nails done. But because I was pregnant, I couldn't really risk it because at that time we didn't know what COVID was. We didn't know what was going on. So I didn't want to risk it for me. I didn't want to risk it for my child. So I ended up not getting my nails done. And actually I learned how to do my nails by myself. And I just, you know, sat on my porch and did my nails. But I think that was actually where things kind of started to go wrong for me because the world was changing so fast and the pregnancy was already stressful i remember i was 38 weeks and i was just like please god i just want this baby to come out like i'm tired if you've ever been pregnant you know that that last stretch is the most frustrating stretch ever because the patience is already wearing thin your back hurts you can't roll over it's just too many things so i was just not in a place where i really wanted to be pregnant anymore so luckily for me i gave birth but when because it was 2020 I did not have anybody in the hospital room except me and my then husband and it was just such a weird time for me because I you know wanted my mom to be there and luckily I was able to like take the baby and you know go to my mom and she bathed her and everything so that kind of made me happy but it was just such a weird time now also on the social media end there was so much going on on social media it seemed like everybody was just having a party you know TikTok was like huge and I was really into TikTok. So when the baby came, I went straight back into TikTok. It became like my outlet because I was super, super excited about just creating. And, you know, I'd, I'd already started gaining people following me on TikTok. So I was just having fun, honestly, because that, at that time, that was fun. Now, everything started to go downhill in July. And I would never forget because it was super sunny outside and... I remember going out. I can't remember what I went out for, but I know that Advana was born in May. So this was like two months after she was born. And I had to start coming to the reality that I have two under two in a pandemic. And it was just a lot. And I was also trying to breastfeed. So it was a lot for me, but here and there, I would just like take drives to places. And I remember the one time I took a drive and the sun was on my skin. I was just super, super happy. And I didn't know where the happiness came from, but I was just like really, really in a good mood. Now, it slowly started coming to a head when I was a little bit too happy and the happiness kept going up. 
and I know that sounds really weird but if I was to describe it it felt like there was so much energy in my body and I couldn't talk fast enough for the energy in my body and I was too excited so day one was just me just being excited there was nothing wrong with it there was nothing you know inherently like okay something is wrong with Ronke something is you know off now by the second day I had stopped eating and the worst thing you can do at that time I didn't know I was going through a mental health crisis but the worst thing you can do is to stop eating because eating sleeping working out all those things that people say and kind of you know put to the side are actually one of the most important building blocks of mental health and being able to keep up with your mental stability so at that time I stopped eating and I think I had eaten like I was only drinking coffee which even made things worse and I was still trying to breastfeed so at some point I kind of had to stop slowly breastfeeding because I wasn't really sure what was going on all I knew was I was super stressed and I was just talking continuously and then the behavior started getting more erratic so this went on for a course of a week before the ending of the week I had actually stopped sleeping so I hadn't really had restful sleep in like two days so I, I would like lay down but I wouldn't actually feel the need to sleep so where things started actually getting bad was when I was starting to get scared of everything like I was scared to like boil water to cook I was scared to pick up my babies because I felt like I was maybe gonna hurt them I was like really stressed out I don't know how to explain it but everything became pr a problem then I kind of started pushing everybody away so I had a group chat of a couple of girls that we were all together and we did this challenge and it was really fun but I guess at the time because I wasn't in the right space I took myself out of the group chat and because my manic mind was telling me oh you need to start afresh you know you need to cut everybody off again not knowing I was going through a mental health crisis and I also unfollowed everybody now the unfollowing part is where people online started kind of being like oh is there something going on because she's never really this is not like normal behavior for her and you know I just kind of chucked it up to like okay this is a new start for me at that time then I kind of started pushing away my family and friends you know I started kind of like you know not wanting them to be around me threatening to like cut them off and things like that because I was just in that mental space where I was like this is a new beginning I don't need anybody around me now when people started coming around and they were like okay something is really going on I think she needs to go to a mental hospital that was where even though I wasn't in the right mind I didn't know what was going on all I could think of was I failed my family and I don't know what's going on and my brain wasn't really in the real world in a way that's how I can describe it it felt as though I was out of the current reality so by the time I got to the mental hospital I was basically delirious and I actually tried to grab a nurse I, I okay it's not funny but um, I thought that was hilarious every time I look back sometimes in this life you have to find moments in your life that no matter how dark it is you have to find moments in your life to laugh because <laughs> there's nothing else you can literally do but finally they were able to like calm me down they gave me medication and everything and I, I was able to you know my mania was able to stop now again while I was there they had put me on a schedule I didn't have my phone so I was basically just there you know coloring getting in touch with myself again it felt like a reset to me and you know I got to meet a couple of different people and I would never forget there was one lady who I went to her and I was like how do you manage this like you know mental health children what's going on and she just told me she said all you have to do is put yourself first as a mom I think that's one thing that I really needed to hear at that time because 
I was putting my kids first. I was putting my husband at that time first. Everything became priority aside from my mental health and how I took care of myself. And immediately she said that it seemed like something clicked. And I was just kind of like, wow, that makes sense. I should put myself first. Now, I ended up going back home and everything changed. My, my brain was different. Everything seemed different. And if I'm going to be totally honest, I, I still feel like there's a huge correlation between spirituality and mental health. Can't really go into that because I don't have enough uh, research to back up my statements. But it just felt like my life started afresh. It, start, it's, it just felt like everything looked new. I had a, a very big, renewed sense of gratitude for everything around me. Now, because I had started taking medication, I, I wasn't really sure what medication I was taking. All I know was the doctors prescribed me this medication and I have to take it. I didn't know what the effects were. I didn't know what it was. I was given 300 milligrams of lithium. I was giving Risperdone. I was given um, HCL. I didn't, I'd never heard of any of these medications before. All I knew was in one of them, the warnings was you can't sit outside for too long or else you will literally pass away. And one thing that really stuck to me was that was scary for me coming out of a mental hospital and hearing that, you know, seeing a paper that said, oh, um, you pass away if you sit in the sun too long, you know, but again, I didn't think anything of it because I trusted that the doctors that prescribed it for me knew what they were doing and everything was fine. Fast forward, um, you know, we were every, everything was still, you know, we're trying to piece things back together. You know, I, I didn't I no longer had the friends I had and just trying to piece things back together. And I didn't know at the time I actually didn't know this until I moved back here um, to Baltimore, because at that time. You know, I was it, so many things had happened, but I did not know that that the drugs had actually interacted and I ended up back in the mental hospital and they said that I had catatonia, which <clears throat> let me uh, read the Google de definition of catatonia because not going to lie till today, I don't really do, know what it was, but all I know is um this is the definition. Catatonia is a new psychiatric condition that can cause a person to appear unresponsive to their surroundings or to behave in unusual ways. So symptoms of catatonia, which this is basically what at that time what I was exhibiting, standing very still and staring into space, holding unusual postures, repeating the same movements or phrases, not speaking, eating or drinking, doing as they're told without question, not doing something or resisting doing something. Now, with catatonia, it can be either treated with medication or shock therapy. And I think that's where things started getting really bad because I was very unresponsive. I wasn't myself. And they had to ask my parents, like, do you want to do shock therapy? Now, at the time, I had no clue what shock therapy was. I didn't even know this was a thing until after I got out and they were like, hey, you are so unresponsive that we needed to do shock therapy. Shock therapy basically is where they use electrical currents to basically try to revive you and to make you start thinking properly. And I found out that it would actually omit a year of your life, which meant that I was gonna forget my daughter which in a way I'm so happy that I recovered before then because that is where I started realizing how powerful the mind truly is. We talk about diseases all the time, you know, we talk about cancer, diabetes, we talk about, you know, um, all these things that are just physical, but we don't realize that all these things are also connected to the brain. There are people who are in a wheelchair and end up walking not necessarily because their legs got better but their brain told their legs that they could do something that the legs had forgotten to do so in a way like i'm saying all this to say that we need to be more aware that mental health matters and i know that's like this the most cliche thing ever but it really does because 
your brain can tell you to do so many things and your body will do it. And that whole experience really made me just have a new sense of gratitude for life. I think that for me, that was my near death experience and it changed me forever. And honestly, now I can say I'm grateful for it because it put me in a more empathetic place. Um, I think it really humbled me, but that's not the end of the story. So let's continue. So after I got back from the mental hospital, I, again, I was taking these drugs. I didn't think anything of it, but I knew something was fundamentally wrong. Every day I would wake up, I would want to go back to sleep, meaning that I would wake up and I would just do nothing until the end of the day because I just felt numb. And when I mean numb, I just did not feel anything. I didn't want to do anything. And this went on for a whole year. So I moved from Baltimore to Arizona. And after I moved to Arizona, I started looking for a new psychiatrist because I needed to refill my medication and all that. And the psychiatrist told me, hey, um, let's talk more. Now that it's been a year, let's talk more. And this whole pa- this, the whole year that I was you know, numb and all those things. I was also in therapy. So that's actually where my therapy journey started. It started in 2020. So in 2021, when I moved, I got a new psychiatrist. I got a new therapist. I actually started EMDR therapy, which honestly, I I generally feel like it's something that I want to try again. EMDR therapy is basically the use of hand movements in helping your brain process things and I just thought that was amazing actually that was really one experience that really changed my view on therapy and how helpful it could be because there's so many different types and there's therapy for everybody and if you're struggling you don't need to struggle especially if you feel like you could be helped and for me my huge thing was taking medication I've never really liked taking medication I actually hate taking medication but because I knew at the time I needed help and because I had to start to come to terms with the fact that I was diagnosed bipolar I that was something that I couldn't take for such a long time so let me backtrack a little bit because I realized I didn't actually really talk about the diagnosis So when I first went to mental hospital, I was diagnosed bipolar and I was also diagnosed with postpartum psychosis. Now, another thing is we talk so much about postpartum depression. Actually, postpartum depression, to me, the way it's being talked about, it's not being talked about enough. It's it's actually being talked about like it's some small thing instead of it being talked about like it's a very serious thing that happens to women after childbirth. But I didn't know that there was more. I didn't know there was postpartum psychosis. And that was one thing that I experienced because even in the mania, I also had psychosis, which meant I was seeing things like the curtain turned into an eye, just so many different things that I saw that were just so strange and so scary. Now, after I was diagnosed, it really changed my perspective on myself because as somebody who has always seen themselves as a broken person, I almost it almost felt like I could now finally identify where the brokenness was coming from and it kind of healed me in a way it healed me because it it felt good to know that there was a cause for the reason why I did certain things not that it was to blame but it was something that I was able to take and be like okay cool this is what it is I have this disease but that doesn't define me and i think with mental health that's the biggest struggle we always let things define us like i don't really think of myself as a bipolar person i think of myself as ronke the creative and i just so happen to have bipolar disorder and it's so funny because that was this is actually one of the first times that i've actually just come out and said that because it was something that was so stigmatized with me and even though I've never really talked about this but just to get like super vulnerable because I feel like that's what this podcast is about I actually had it used against me several times especially when I was getting separated as the basis of 
me being irrational or acting irrational, which I wasn't. I was acting based off of the fact that somebody had physically abused me. And in a way, like that was something that it took so much time to stop blaming myself for reacting to somebody else's disrespect. <sighs> this is getting very deep. Now that has been almost four years after all that, I realized how much I'm okay. You know, not to say that I don't have my down points or the things that have gone on that I still second guess myself, but it did get better. Now, let me go back to the point of the story where I was talking about how I found a new psychiatrist. So I found a new psychiatrist. She was a woman and she was not only a woman, but she was a black woman. And honestly, I know she might never hear this, but she genuinely saved my life. And I think as people, we do not get to see the little things that people do or the big things, the huge things that people do for us because we just see them as practitioners, but the practitioners matter. The nurses matter. The doctors matter. The psychiatrists matter. They all matter because if not, I would not have been sitting here today talking to you guys because at that time I was on the verge of taking my own life. So, um, she decided that, Hey, what if we could just reduce the dosing of your medication and switch you to an antidepressant instead of you taking 300 milligrams of a drug that is possibly making you have apathy because like i said at that time i wasn't feeling anything i wasn't myself if you looked me in the eye it felt like nobody was home like i just did not look okay and even a lot of people on YouTube, when I did record YouTube videos here and there, noticed that something was wrong. But even I couldn't even explain what was wrong because at that time, I didn't even know anything was wrong. I just thought this was something that was going to pass because of the medication that I was taking. So she put me on an antidepressants and honestly, it got worse. And she told me that it was going to get worse before it got better. But I would never forget there was one day it was like 1 a.m this was in between because when you're weaning yourself off a mental health medication and you're putting your and and a psychiatrist is putting you in another one there's a lot of interactions that are not you're not really able to explain and one of them is the suicide ideations and i remember there was one day i was like at 1 a.m where i was basically trying to tell my brain not to jump off our fourth floor ba balcony but after that bout of horrific things that my brain told me to do <laughs> i got better and things got better and i started coming back to myself and i started enjoying things again and i started laughing again and actually laughing again and throughout this whole time one thing the whole year that i was basically numb I missed myself. I missed that part of me that was super goofy and could crack jokes. And I would constantly throughout that year, like watch videos of my old self and wish for her back. So when I got better, I became her again and I became her, but better. And I was okay with who she is because I realized that I was a wonderful person. I, I wasn't broken because of a diagnosis. I make people laugh and I'm able to inspire people and people love me not necessarily because of what I have to do for them, but who I am. And I think that because of that, the people that were around me became people that genuinely poured into me and supported me. And I was able to reconnect with a couple of my friends and I was able to build a new community and I was able to move back to Baltimore and get separated and all those changes and all those things. The reason why I tell my story is because it's a story of resilience and it's not only a story of resilience, but it's a story of if you don't go through it to come out the other side and tell other people about it, 
what about the people who are still going through it now? How are they going to see that there's a beacon of hope and there's a beacon of light? And even me, I remember seeing a, another motivational speaker and she was also a single mom and she had talked about her struggles and I remember feeling so seen. So I tell my story and I've said this so many times because of the person who needs to feel seen. I don't tell it to gain any type of sympathy or to gain any type of woe is me because I am not a victim. I am somebody who has gained strength from the vulnerability that I've shown online and in, in general because I'm able to sit here and tell you that I'm human and I've been through things and I went through something that changed the way I viewed mental health. But I'm grateful that I went through it because I now understand how important mental health is and I am I'm now so much gentler with the way I treat people and I'm so much gentler in the way I see other human beings because I now understand that everybody has the things they're going through regardless of if something is small to you it's big to them even children even my children most of the time I try to be in tune with their needs because even even though to a child, yes, like dropping a toy is the end of the world, but to them, that is their world, you know? So I say all this to say, if you're going through it, there is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> I know that I always say all these cliche things, but it's because I started understanding that the things that were cliche were the things that mattered most. And it is very important for you to understand that no matter how hard things are, they are preparing you for a stage in your life that there is unsurmountable joy. And the joy that I've experienced in the past year, even though I've been through harsh things and even though I've cried several times, even though I've had mental breakdowns here and there, has been something that I would never take for granted. So... I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I hope that my story not only inspires you, but also I hope that through me telling this story, you understand that if you have struggles, no matter how small you see your struggles are, like no matter if it's anxiety, depression, or you feel unworthy or self-doubt, all those things, you are a human being and those are normal emotions but if it gets to a place where you need help it's okay to ask for help it's okay to take meds it just means that you need a little bit extra assistance and that's okay so i will see you guys in my next episode and i hope you've enjoyed this and yeah sending you all the positive vibes and this world mental health day i hope you take some time to yourself to take care of yourself mentally, which means journaling or doing something you truly enjoy. And honestly, before fall comes, sitting outside and just enjoying some meditation time. So I will see you in my next episode and have a wonderful and blissful week. Bye.